they drove me around and I said, what do you want to build a hotel here for? Nothing grows here. You've got a small population. You've got three times the number of goats that you have people. He said, I know that, but let me show you the beaches. So he drove us out to what is called Palm Beach. And I walked on that beach and it was the most beautiful beach I'd ever been on. It was as if you were walking in talcum powder. I said, well, you've got a great beach, but what else have you got here? What is typical of Aruba? He said, well, we have the Diva Diva trees and we have the Posada. He explained that the Posada was a wind which never stops. It's constant. Once in my experience when I was in Aruba, it stopped for about 10 minutes and you think it was a volcano because people were walking, oh my God, what happened? What happened? But then it began to blow again. We got all of our foliage from Venezuela and we started planting a beautiful garden. During the day we'd plant it, during the night the goats would eat it. So we were stuck. So we planted a fence of cactus all around the place so the, co the goats couldn't get in. But the goats were smarter than we were. They swam out into the ocean for about a foot or two, came into the garden and ate the garden again. So we finally built big wire fences out into the ocean and the goats couldn't swim that far. My design was built purely on the fact that by angling the rooms, the, the breeze would go through every one of the rooms. 30 years later, when I came back, my poor little Aruba Caribbean hotel was almost completely enclosed by so many new hotels. There were, must have been four or five, maybe six. Our first impression of the property was it was a blank canvas. And we basically made the suggestion to replan and reconstruct and create a destination resort. Upon that first effort and first discussion, we came back with some very specific recommendations which had to do with tearing down some of the building, uh, tearing off some of the previous architecture that had been added before, tearing off some of the existing buildings that uh, had been added over the years to the original building. What we tried to create was a, an entrance arrival that would allow you to arrive uh, at the front and then it would open up, expose the gardens and the ocean and the beach as a very central focus to the, the new design. You would walk into the rooms, they were very large. Uh, they were large scale bathrooms as well as bedrooms, but what you didn't gain was any view from the room. You had to go out onto a balcony and overlook a solid rail to see the ocean. But the easy thing was just opening up the rail and giving the room a view. One of the key concepts of the ground plane and the property, we worked with uh, EDSA, who are landscape architects and, and land planners. We master planned the site that allowed the ocean and the beach to be pulled up to the hotel. The idea of taking the pool and stretching it allowed that connection to be made at the beach level. We felt like we could bring a boldness to, to the building by adding color on the exterior as well as the interior and then carry those colors and finishes throughout the property. There's a hole we added to the lobby which lets sunlight into the lobby so the wind is very dominant and we wanted that wind to come in when we wanted it to and we wanted to close it off when we, when we could. It's themed uh, in a sense that gives you a feeling that it uh, was there before and we built around it uh, or somebody came in and took a parcel of the land and, and built their own little uh, restaurant and they run it independent of the Radisson. The Aruba Caribbean was just lost. And then when I saw the photographs of what you have done with it, you made a jewel out of it. And I think it's going to be the most unusual hotel. It's got more charm, more color, everything that one expects on the Caribbean island. All I can say to Radisson is, God, you've done a great job.